Every episode, I search all over the internet. I scour all over the internet for stories that are weird, crazy, and out there. This is strange, but true. So this strange but true episode is going to be a Christmas special, if you will. The day this video goes up is December 21st, which for people like me that are witches, it's Yule. Which I have done a previous video about Yule. I'll leave that in the description bar below just in case you want to check it out. So go ahead and click that link in the description bar below. I'll have that down there so you can click on it and check it out. But I decided to do like a little Christmas special or, you know, I guess Christmas episode of Strange But True. So let's cut to the chase and let's just jump right into it. So here it is. We're going to jump into the video. Now the first story that we're going to jump into for this Strange But True uh, special is there was this, the, this family, the Stewarts, that were driving home from a Christmas party and ended up in Superior, Arizona in the 1930s at the time with a flat tire. And, wh and while they were fixing the flat tire, the wife found a old hat box with a child in it. Now, of course, the astronomical odds of them finding the child in this particular area of Arizona in the 30s, the place is basically, even to this day, there's not really anything surrounding this area. So for them to find this child when they did, and at the time they did, is in itself a strange but true story, but also a Christmas miracle, if you will. After they discovered the baby, they uh, brought it to the proper authority so the baby could be adopted outright properly. And at that time, then finally a family adopted her, the Hatbox baby and then named her Sharon. In Christmas of 2009, Tracy Herman... I can't pronounce the name. Anyways, she was giving birth to a baby and it was perfectly healthy, she was. Had no uh, history of cardiac arrest, went into cardiac arrest and died. The doctors deciding to try to save the baby performed a cesarean section on the d woman who was deceased and it, four minutes later after getting the baby out the baby was dying then four minutes later the woman who was dead for four minutes came back to life and her heart stabilized and then the baby ended up fine <laughs> still to this day the doctors cannot explain why she went into cardiac arrest when she had no history of it and basically how she was dead for four minutes and the baby was dying and then later on Perfectly recovered, perfectly normal, with no other health problems afterwards. The next story is about a window washer named Al Sides, I may be pronouncing that wrong, who fell 50 feet, 500, I mean not 50 feet, 500 feet to his supposed demise, was in a coma, all, and woke up on Christmas Day perfectly fine. And of course he had to learn to walk again, but after he learned to walk, he actually did a charity three mile walk for charity. Doctors to this day cannot explain how a man fell 500 feet and survived. In fact, famous physicist, I can't remember his name, so I'll, it'll be on the screen right here. Famous physicist said that obviously it was luck, which is the closest you'll ever get a physicist to saying that it was a miracle. Now this next story that I'm about to tell you takes place in the 1950s during the Korean War. After the start of the Korean War, thousands of North Koreans were gathering at the Hungnam docks, hoping for one of the Allied ships to get them somewhere less massacre -y. But by the time they got there, there weren't any ships left, and they didn't seem realistically that they were going to get you know, saved. Thankfully, like one of the ships were captured by, I mean, captained by uh, Leonardo LaRue, a firm believer that one ship couldn't con one sh that one couldn't concern themselves with say things like your reality where human life is at stake. So he got was able. This ship was only able to hold sixty people at most. But he ordered all fourteen thousand North Korean refugees to get on the damn boat, as he called it, which is sort of like stuffing two hundred people into one coffin. They all did get on one boat, and miraculously, they ended up with more people on the ship than they started with and uh, even more thing is they arrived on GG Island on Christmas Day and the remarkable thing is that not one single one of them died 
Now, the next story is about a woman's lost dog that was found 1,300 miles away on Christmas night. In April 26, 2006, Aurora, Aurora, Colorado, a woman named Blonda Ludstum suffered the most heartbreaking situation not involving a wood chipper that any dog lover could endure. Her pet rat terrier, Daisy, ran away from home and didn't come back for months. And she could not find any trace of her dog. But seven months later, around Christmas, her dog was found on Christmas in Knoxville, Tennessee. Talk about a journey. Kind of reminds me of that uh, one movie where the dog, the cat, and I can't remember what other. Where the, yeah, Homeward Bound, where the animals follow their uh, owners all the way to whatever city it was they went to. Anyways, um, that is all the strange but true uh, stories for this video, so let's hop to the next part of this video. So, that's been this strange but true episode. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you enjoyed the content. If you want to see more stories that are stra of strange true stories or about strange people in history, make sure you hit that subscribe button, which will be here or here, and that notification bell so you can be notified of future strange but true videos. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up. So you can let YouTube, YouTube's algorithm know that this is the kind of content you want to see. And comment down below if you have any strange but true Christmas stories you'd like to share here on this thing. Or even strange but true Yule stories. Comment down below and let me know. I would really enjoy that. And I'm Mordecai Cross, and as always, I've been your host. Stay strange.